Recoil is one of those pesky attributes of shooting that we all want to manage as best as possible. The quest for a flatter shooting gun is never ending, whether it's a competition gun or a carry gun. One thing that has seemingly gotten a lot more popular lately is one of these guys here. Thumb rests, gas pedals, nitro fins, antimatter maxi pads with wings, a bunch of different names for the same kind of general idea. Alleged to place your thumb with the purpose of using leverage to control recoil. Though muzzle flip is probably a more accurate term, recoil happens no matter what. It's just physics, Newton's third law of motion and such. But the better we can manage it, the faster and hopefully more accurately we can apply lead downrange. Now these things aren't new, they've been around for a while, mostly on competition guns for Steel Challenge, USPSA Open Division, etc. But we've noticed an uptick in interest in them lately for more normal guns, either like the Go Guns gas pedal for the SIG P320s that have been around for a while, or something like this for 2011s. The P320 gas pedals are pretty small and unobtrusive for the most part. They replace the takedown lever and it's pretty easy to find holsters for. In fact, all of our outside the waistband holster models for the P320 series work with these. 2011 versions, however, seem to be a bit more chonky and a problem for holsters. This one replaces the slide stop and was made by Atlas Gunworks. For what it is, it's pretty well made. While the P320 pedal is really more of just like a spot to index your thumb rather than like crank down on, these ones have this big old shelf that you can really put some leverage on. We picked this one up since we get a ton of questions about uh, these things and holster fitment, things like that. So we decided to give it a try. We've been using this thing for about a year, kind of on and off playing around with it. The camera's autofocused while trying to get slow motion video. Uh, didn't really want to keep up as fast, especially like with build drills, and it resulted in a lot of Sasquatch quality video. Them's the brakes. I suppose that's what happened when you uh, get the same guy that cleans your toilets to run the camera. Anyways, after trying to give this thing a fair shake, I formed my own opinion on the effectiveness of it, but from the footage, you can draw your own conclusions. Maybe you'll think I'm way out to lunch. The only way I could think of to truly test how well this worked beyond, like, it feels better or feels worse is to test split times combined with group size. I did this with doubles drills and build drills, both with and without the thumb rest on several 2011s, an Athena, a Staccato XC, and a Staccato P. For this testing, I didn't put any focus on trigger control per se. It was really more of a test of recoil control and how your grip manages that. My honest opinion is that the worse your fundamentals are in terms of grip, the more you will like this. The more time you have spent refining your grip or dialing in recoil management, the less useful you'll likely find this thing. The theory that it allows you to apply leverage in a way that reduces muzzle flip is sound, but in practice that doesn't necessarily mean that your follow-up shots will be actually faster or more accurate. As long as you have the correct tension in the correct places like your wrists and hands, and are relaxed where you don't need tension, like say your shoulders, it doesn't need to take a lot of muscle to manage recoil. Recoil happens regardless of what you do. It's more important that the gun returns to a predictable spot rather than you jam it back into place. As long as the gun's not shifting around a bunch in your hands or uh, completely out of control during recoil, it really doesn't take a whole lot to just zip it back on to your target spot. Honestly, I think there's enough margin of shooter error between strings of fire that I can't conclusively say that it was faster or more accurate with the thumb rest versus without. The best I could seem to do in terms of like speed and recoil control was to really focus on bearing down on the thumb rest, which I guess could be fine as long as you weren't overdriving the gun down during recoil and only wanted to focus on just the speed of your splits. But I don't want to just focus on the speed. I want to focus on the target and not think about the grip. In practice, it's all right and even ideal to be able to pay attention to the sensations of your gun during recoil. This can help you isolate and diagnose both good and bad sensations. For example, if you feel the grip sliding back and forth in your hands, or feel your wrist kind of hinging or breaking, charging into the gun right as you pull the trigger. Paying attention to those things and noticing them can help you eliminate those issues. But for a match or even for self-defense, you want to be able to focus on the target and have the grip trigger control, etc., all be fairly automatic. And maybe you could get to that point with this thing. I just 
couldn't seem to take advantage of it without making sure I was thinking about it. One benefit of it almost seems to be that rather than having the thumb itself provide any meaningful resistance, putting that pressure on the rest can kind of trick you into locking your wrists, which does help manage recoil in itself. But I didn't find that there was anything as far as improvement goes with the rest that you couldn't achieve without it. Now call me crazy, but if I'm going to spend money on something, it at the very minimum has to achieve some sort of greater result than not having it at all. Especially considering the negatives of this, which include not fitting holsters besides race holsters, and generally being a bulky pain in the ass. There are only so many times I could jam my hands into this thing while racking the slider during reloads before it got pretty annoying. Not to mention that I don't like spending a bunch of time practicing with a pistol that is very dissimilar than my carry gun. How I would grip this thing to take advantage of the rest is not the same as how I would grip my carry gun. Remember when I said the worse you are, the more you would like it? Well, when I first used it, I actually liked it because it wasn't very good. And then I spent a bunch of time actually focusing on like rebuilding my grip mechanics from scratch and learned how to analyze and refine it on my own. And when I progressed in that, then came back to testing this, I found a whole lot less use in it. My honest opinion is that if you were interested in one of these, skip it and buy ammo instead. If you already have one of these, ditch it and buy ammo instead. In either case, spending some time at the range doing like the doubles drill will likely be far more beneficial in your skill progression than any one piece of gear will be. Grip is all about managing tension and pressures. Applying both where it's needed and not applying it where it isn't. In order to figure out exactly where you need to apply pressure and exactly how much with your hands on your gun, take some experimentation. The problem with the thumb rest is it kind of limits that experimentation by forcing your hands and thumb to hold the gun in a certain way. Grip is one of those things that it's really easy to learn, but it's difficult to master, especially when you're talking about those super fast chick hitting splits and accuracy as fast as possible. And I'm certainly far from mastering it, but I'm a lot closer once I ditch the crutch that I've come to realize that this is. Now, an obvious argument against my opinion here is that these things are common on race guns. Guns with frame mounted optics, three port comps, slide rackers usually do have a thumb rest as well. And those guns are also already resigned to using strictly race holsters. So the holster issue isn't really an issue for those guys. And once you're that far down the rabbit hole, you are either trying to use money to overcome your lack of skill, or you're spending so much time, money and effort practicing that you can overcome the kind of wonkiness of these things. Either one of those is really fine by me, but for the average gun owner with a more typical gun, I think it'll be more of a hindrance than a help. Now, it should be noted that it did feel like it was helping to control the muzzle flip, particularly with the Staccato P, which is a bit more recoil heavy than the XC or the Athena. But actual measurable results, such as split times, accuracy, or even muzzle flip, as you can see in these videos, pretty much exactly the same. Aside from shooter error, string to string, there wasn't really a whole lot of difference. There's no difference. What's the point in the pussy pedal? So why would we spend time in a video like this? Why don't we just, you know, design a holster that works for these and shut the fuck up about it? Well, we've built a few one-offs and test holsters and have never really been happy with the outcome. The problem is that you either need to cut a path for the pedal to go or build a big channel for it to pass through. Now, since the thumb rest lives right where the mount needs to be, that creates some issues. Either the holster is kind of weakened at the mount, or there's a large protrusion that pushes the holster out further from the body, which creates some forming issues with the kydex and can also create a little bit of problems with the draw. The channel also creates a problem where debris has a chance to fall right into the holster, which is annoying at best and a liability at worst. And the other reason is that I just don't think that this is actually helpful to a shooter in the long run. And believe it or not, I actually care about helping guys get better rather than just taking people's money. It'd be pretty easy for us to just jump on every bandwagon that comes along, produce a product that we can collect some cash for it, rinse, repeat through the cycle, but it doesn't make 
a whole lot of sense for us to spend a bunch of time in R&D into something that isn't that helpful and isn't going to give the customers a good result. I'd rather spend time sharing what I've learned to help you guys improve if I can. To that effect, I'm going to leave some links below to some videos that I've found helpful in regards to grip and recoil uh, management. Interestingly, none of them mention installing goofy shit on your gun. I might do a video on a couple of the drills I use later, but for now, these guys are definitely do a solid job and are certainly experts on the topic. Anyways, that's about enough of that. Fuck this thing. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. This... Just to do the doubles drill and get your dry fire practice daily instead. This thing's like training wheels for your gun. Thanks for watching.